Welcome to day 31 of our scripture reading and daily encouragement. Today we're going to cover Exodus 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. So it's Exodus 34 through 38. And we're going to cover Matthew 23, verses 1 through 22. So as we pick up in the Old Testament here in Exodus, Moses is talking to God. Um, he's come down the mountain with the first set of tablets. The people have been worshiping the golden calf. The uh, tablets were broken. And now Moses is talking to God. And when God speaks to him in Exodus 34, I'm going to kind of pick up in verse 6. God says, I'm Yahweh the Lord. I'm the God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity. I forgive rebellion. I forgive sin. But then he says, but I don't excuse the guilty. This is where we see this being reinforced. He is telling us he is the God of compassion and mercy. He is slow to anger. He's full of love and compassion and forgiveness. But there are sometimes consequences for our actions. But he's reinforcing to Moses here, okay, I won't destroy these people because this is who I am. I'm telling you who I am. And so Moses begs God to travel with him. God, don't leave us alone. Travel with us. And I love this in verse 14 of chapter 34. God reinforces, you must worship no other gods. For the Lord, whose very name is Jealous, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. So, so many times we hear, you know, the word jealous, and we know we're not supposed to have jealousy. We know we're not supposed to be jealous. But it's used in a little bit different context here. It's saying it's a good thing that God is a jealous God. His very name means jealous because what he's jealous of is a relationship with us. God wants to have a relationship with you. I want you to hear that. God wants to have a relationship with you. And he's jealous about that relationship. He doesn't want you having a relationship with another God or another idol. And for some people, that will mean a literal another God because they might be into witchcraft or into worshiping some other religion. But for some of us, those idols are our stuff, our things. And we need to make sure that we're not setting aside our relationship with God for those things. So God is a jealous God, but it's a good jealousy here. He wants that one-on-one -on -one relationship with you that you can have through Jesus dying on the cross, through the Holy Spirit that Jesus left with us. So Moses is up there again for 40 days and 40 nights. He rewrites the tablets. He comes down the mountain and he says he's not aware that his face has become radiant. He's Because he's spoken to God, because he's spoken to Yahweh, his face is radiant. And I think there's something for us to gather there. If we spend time with God, it shows on us. People can see it on us. They tell us they can see it radiating out of us. And it's sort of like Moses. Moses was literally in the presence of God. So his face literally radiated. But we can have that same thing coming out of us if we are so full of God and so full of the Holy Spirit. People will see it. They'll see it in our faces. They'll see it in our demeanor. They'll see it in the joy we have. So Moses lays out to the people what God had had told him. You know, he didn't get to do that the first time. He spent the first 40 days and 40 nights with God telling him all these cool things. Then he comes down the mountain to find them worshiping the calf and he breaks it, the tablets, and then he jumps in to intercede to make sure God doesn't destroy them. So this time he tells them everything um, that God said to do. And then we see through most of today's Exodus scripture, it's detailing the men that did the work that God commanded. And it says God gave special talents to those people. He gave special talents uh, and gifts to the people who needed to give the materials, um, which would sort of be like giving to the church today. Um, but he also gave special talents to the people who had to be the craftsmen. So you may think, man, I don't have the talent. I don't have the skills to do what I think God wants me to do or what someone told me I'm supposed to do. But I want you to be encouraged here that God can give you that talent with the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It tells us in Scripture that same Spirit lives in us that raised Jesus from the dead. That same Spirit that gave these talents to these people lives in us. And He can equip us to do things we've never imagined we could do if we're just obedient and we just try to do what He says to do and we trust Him. Okay, now we flip over to Matthew. 
And Jesus is entering into this place. He's already questioned back and stumped the Pharisees and Sadducees, but now he kind of goes on the attack a little bit. He starts saying, don't listen. Do, I'm sorry, he says, listen to what the religious leaders say. Practice what they say, but don't follow what they do. He says they don't practice what they preach. So I'm going to say that again. He says, listen to what they say. Listen to what they teach. But don't follow their example because their example is hypocritical to what they teach. And I think there's a big lesson for us. Some of us may hear a preacher preach or a person talk about the Bible. But then we see them living a hypocritical life where they're not living it out. And we focus so much on that hypocritical life that it drives us away from the gospel or the Bible. But what Jesus, we can apply that to our lives today. Listen to what they're saying about the Bible and you do it yourself. Don't worry about the fact that they're not doing it. They're the ones that are hypocrites. They're the ones that are going to pay for that. They're the ones that are going to have to answer to God. You do what scripture says and you worry about you. You know, there's this term going around right now that kind of drives me crazy. But the term is you do you, you do you. I'll do me, you do you. And that's kind of what Jesus is saying here is you listen to what they say and you go do it yourself. Don't worry about the fact that they're being hypocrites. And Jesus goes on to say everything they do is for show. They love their positions. They love the prestige. They love the privileges. And he reinforces the statement that the greatest among you in the kingdom of God, the greatest among you must be a servant. So he's reinforcing these people are not servants. They're teaching about the kingdom of God, but they don't even get it themselves. And if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you must be a servant. And he continues to call them hypocrites because they don't do what they say and teach. And again, I want to encourage you today because we still see the hypocrisy today. We see it in religious leaders. We see it in preachers. I've seen it myself. It's driven me away from churches. It's made me wonder if all preachers, sometimes I sit and think, well, you know, do, do all preachers, you know, where am I in this? And I, I think that what we have to, the encouragement we have to get here is quit worrying about what that teacher does. Um, yes, are, are there times that we need to call them out because we're walking with those men or those women and we need to call them out that they're being hypocrites? Absolutely. We've talked about the judgment piece of this before, but I'm talking about ha how it applies to you. Don't let someone else's actions and their hypocrisy drive you away from God, drive you away from a relationship with God, drive you away from the things that Jesus says to do. Read scripture yourself and do what Jesus says. When you hear other people talk about it, listen with ears of how can I do this myself? Not with judgment on, man, you're not doing this yourself. Because we might find ourselves in a place today, just like Jesus did in that time, where we're saying, do what they're saying, do what they're teaching, but don't follow their example. And now you go set the example that others would wanna follow. That's my goal. I wanna read scripture and I want to set an example. I want people to see Jesus' words coming through my actions so they'll want to do what I'm doing. Now, I'm not perfect, and I know that, and I have failures, and I have people around me that I want to tell me when I'm failing, and I have Jesus' grace when I fail, uh, when I don't even realize it, when I'm blind to the things I'm doing wrong. I think that we all have blind spots, and sometimes we don't even know what we're doing wrong. But the most important thing out of this scripture is don't be like those religious leaders of that day and some of our day today. Actually do what the scriptures say, not what you see other people doing from a hypocrisy standpoint. I hope you are blessed today, and I hope you have a great day.